All right. Um, I wanted to take just a couple of minutes with you to look at concepts of uh, nutrition and lifestyle. Um, these are very important notions when it comes to healing. Um, there's really no sense in trying to take any sort of medicine if you're working against the process nutritionally or doing things uh, relative to your lifestyle that are contrary to the healing process. Um, you know, I, I think of a friend of mine who came to me years ago with a problem her daughter had. Uh, she had an extreme case of asthma and as a result a lot of trouble breathing. And I remember her coming to me and saying, um, what can her daughter take to help with her lung problems and her breathing problems. And um, I, I, I remember very clearly, although this was a long time ago, um, asking her two questions at that point. Um, the first question was, is your, is your daughter still drinking milk and having good amounts of dairy in her diet? And the answer was yes to that. And the second question was, is your boyfriend still smoking inside the apartment? And the answer was yes to that as well. And so I remember saying to her, stop giving her milk and dairy and have your boyfriend smoke outside and then we can talk. Because doing otherwise is useless. You see, dairy products as a whole um, create a great deal of mucus in the system. They're mucilaginous, and we need some mucus in our system in order to function properly, but that could overwhelm the system. So just on that level of dealing with respiratory issues, you want to take it very easy with dairy. And likewise, of course, dealing with secondhand smoke, that's not going to help much. So if you draw back on the dairy and you eliminate the secondhand smoke, then you could start working with healing the lungs and strengthening the lungs, dealing with the asthma. It's only common sense. So as I told you when we first started this session, when I was dealing with my situation with eczema, that was the first thing that I did. I changed certain aspects of my diet. And we avoided those foods that act as triggering agents for me. So at that point in my life, you know, I shifted gears. And I didn't have to shift too dramatically because my diet was generally a good one. You look at the foods you take. You are what you eat. And so by working with the foods, then, as I mentioned earlier, you work on cleansing the system, and then you work on building the system. And that is how you affect a healing. So um, I'm grateful for that lesson. I'm grateful for the ailments I had because it moved me in this direction of holistic health a very long time ago. And I've been able to appreciate its benefits for decades now and share those notions with many as a result. So when it comes to nutrition, um, truly what I would share with you are two basic facts foundation understandings when it comes to nutrition. Um, the first is this. Um, you want to avoid foods that stress the body. Okay, what foods stress the body? Um, they include things like red meat in particular, high fat content, high cholesterol, um, they um, avoid refined carbohydrates, means white flour products and white sugar. 
these are essentially non-foods. And, um, you know, with white flour products, what you're doing to increase shelf life, and this really began after World War II, you increase shelf life by removing the husk of the wheat, which is the fiber, and the germ, which is the nutrition. You're taking away the fiber, you're taking away the nutrition, what are you left with? You know, if you take some white flour and put a little water on it, roll it up into a ball and throw it against the wall, it'll stick like glue. And that's kind of what it does to your colon. So, I mean, I stopped eating white flour products a long, long time ago as a result. And sugar, white sugar, is a non-food. It's pure calories and it plays havoc with your blood sugar levels. And that means it stresses a number of organs in your body every time you eat sugar. So again, I stopped eating sugar a long, long time ago. Um, instead, I'll use other sweeteners moderately, because I can't eat anything sweet these days. But I'll use maple syrup, or I'll use molasses or honey that are also, you know, nutrient-rich. They have vitamins, they have minerals, and they take um, a longer period of time for the body to break down. I mean, the end result is the same as sugar, but because it takes a while to break down, and because it does have minerals and uh, vitamins, um, you know, it's obviously a much healthier food for the body. So, Refined carbohydrates, very important. Red meats, refined carbohydrates. Caffeine is tough, so to avoid things like coffee and tea. And again, I mean, caffeine is addictive. Um, it stresses the body. Um, if you take in caffeine, you know, try to do it moderately. Um, but after you've taken caffeine regularly for a long period of time, you know it's not only difficult to stop it, but when you do, you get withdrawal symptoms. You get severe headaches. And most people will just start drinking coffee again to get rid of the headaches. So um, it's kind of a vicious circle there. But they do stress the body. Um, just as the additives I've mentioned, you know, where you have preservatives or colorings, any sort of chemical additives to food can have a pronounced effect on the body, on many bodies. So they are things to avoid. And then it comes to dairy also. Um, you know, that's a tough one for a lot of people because you always say, you know, how am I going to get my calcium without dairy? I mean, I haven't had a glass of milk in 40 years. I, I do just fine. Green leafy vegetables, beans, nuts, plenty of calcium out there in the plant world. Um, no concerns about that for me or, or others. Um, but it's not only that. With dairy products, you're dealing with the residues, and they are very measurable. Antibiotics, growth hormones, pesticides. Um, they are heavy. So, you know, dairy products, I eat dairy products moderately. I eat organic butter and organic cheeses in moderate amounts. Um, and, um, and, and so I, I enjoy dairy in that regard, but um, you need to go the organic route, or you should at least to avoid those chemicals that we're talking about. So dairy's a tough one. So these are foods that stress the body. The red meats, the refined carbohydrates, dairy, caffeine products, additives, salt is another, is a tough one that can play havoc with the body. And um, if you could, in the very least, moderate the intake of some of these foods, your body would appreciate it. 
That's number one. And secondly, what we want to do is eat foods as close to their natural state as possible. And all that means is this. Uh, you don't have to be a raw foodist, although if you are, you know, good for you. That's a tough thing to do. That's a whole lifestyle commitment. Um, I've tried it. It's tough. But I do try to eat as much raw food as I can. Otherwise, the idea is to lightly cook your food. Um, steaming food or lightly heating food and so forth. So the notion is if you want to retain you know, much of the nutritional value, um, you want to cook lightly or eat raw as much as you possibly can. Um, so that's the second thing that um, is helpful. So those really, those are the two things you, you should really take to heart. Avoiding foods that stress the body and focusing on um, foods as close to their natural state as possible.